Hello and welcome to the Sky Pirate Podcast. I'm Matt, and today I'm joined by Andrew, Michael, and David. Hello. Hello. In no particular order. No particular order. Um, so in uh, <laughs> since last weekend we just finished Global Game Jam, I uh, figured we'd be talking about it today. Just uh, not necessarily specifically Global Game Jam, but just game jams in general. Uh, we have Michael, David, and Andrew once again in no particular order. Uh, here to talk to us because they have been the longest participating members of Skypire in Global Game Jam. They've been how long have you guys been doing Game Jam? Uh, it's been like four, four, four or five, five years. Five. five, five years, five years. Has it been five years? Uh, well, you missed out on the one, uh, so you've well, done four. I was I was vaguely involved with one of the other teams that year, but you're right that I was mostly working on our yeah thing it, but it's been no. five years it's been five years since our first game jam yes. and all of us have been at least somewhat involved in each of them yep um well, yeah. you, well we've only we've only done uh global game jams we haven't done any of the other. Uh, yes that, i that's think that right. should be pointed out that's, true. that's the best one anyway <laughs> well we don't know we've only been involved in one it's certainly the biggest though um uh, yes. so uh when you guys say partly involved what do you mean by that i'll let the partly involved people take it away um well i mean i've been involved <laughs> and then one year when i was working on uh our senior project stuff i was you know these these uh uh reprobates uh abandoned you <laughs> abandoned me and instead decided to have some fun and make a cool game that i think won the jammers choice yeah it did. yeah they decided to that, make that was cool that was the first year we won so you know i i get it um <laughs> um yeah it should be it probably should specify so um during the game jam actually yeah for, for people that don't know what game jam is we should probably explain uh so a game jam is basically a, a short period of time usually a weekend usually a 48 hour period where teams uh, get together, either you know preform teams or people kind of join teams during the event, uh, and they make a game from start to finish in uh, that time span. So the Global Game Jam happens every year uh, for I think eleven years now. Yes, um, I believe so. And yeah, and so that one goes for forty-eight hours every. It's a weekend. Usually, I think it's the last weekend in January every year. Um, and yeah, and then so. Uh, and when we're talking about Jammer's Choice, it's uh, it's just, uh, you know, whoever... So it's basically split into sites. So every site is done voluntarily. So people create sites where people can come and make games together. Um, and every site kind of does differently. I'm sure some places have more... Uh, maybe maybe have it a little more competitive than others. Um, we always do the Carlton Game Jam site. And that one has a, what they call the Jammer's Choice Award which is basically just as people go around and try the games at the end of the game jam, everyone kind of votes for their favorite and that the results are announced at the end. Nothing's actually won. Um, it's just kind of bragging rights just for just for people's satisfaction to know that they did something cool. But uh, yeah, so, you know, we won that year, but it's uh, just, uh, it's just, we just won satisfaction basically. That's awesome. Um, okay. So, uh, one at a time, I guess we'll start with, uh, in no particular order, we'll start with David, because, uh, I don't know. Uh, David, uh, and then we'll go yeah. on to Michael and Andrew. Um, oh, I see. Why... Is this the new name of our podcast? <laughs> no particular in, in order. Particular order. In no particular um, order. Oh, man, yes, that's perfect. Yes, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. Um, David, why did, you, why did you start participating in Global Game Jam? Uh, I... To be honest, I can't remember like my thought process when we first heard about it or joined it or did it. But I mean, the reason I continue to go to it, which is probably a similar reason, but more well informed because I've you know been there now, um, is that it's just a really cool experience, like. You know, making games, I enjoy making games. And this is like making games in like a bite-sized, no worries kind of version of making games. Right? A, uh, you've got the motivation, which is sometimes very hard. 
in some cases otherwise. So you've got the motivation. You've got a team of people all in the same place, which is something that is not necessarily so easy to have normally. So you got so you get the motivation, you've got the the team, and you've got the fact that it doesn't really matter, right? It's like even if your game ends up not running uh, at the end, it doesn't matter because you you know just kind of tried to make a game, and the whole point of game jam is to just kind of mess around and try to make a thing. It doesn't really like it feels good to actually make a thing that works and runs and is fun but if not at least you had the experience of trying to make stuff and you probably learned something it's about the friends you make along the way <laughs> yeah so so david you no know, more it's like it's more like it's about the games you made along the way well it's interesting because there's a lot of things it's Are about you me but, again, it, david? But, it, but it really mapped it really just it it means different things to different people life is a game so, so David, you would be your your attraction to it. The reason you started was because it was a worry free way of doing what you wanted to do without the whole stress of school and assignments and stuff, basically. Well, it's like normally, normally it's like it takes all this time and stuff to make a game. But in this, it's like, hey, let's just sort of. It's like a it's like a goof off quick version. Not really goof off because you're under a lot of, even though it's not like important, you're still there's a lot of pressure and and tension there's time pressure but, yeah but but no but no real life pressure no life pressure just time pressure yeah okay so um, it's it's a way to it was a way to, to to break free from that and just make something away from the the normal usual stress of whatever yes okay yeah michael what was the question again why did you start <laughs> why did you jamming. G- get into jamming yeah because well you know strawberries will Good that's right <laughs> raspberry who can forget oh i get it <laughs> i remember uh the first time i hear heard about game jam was I, I followed notch the creator of minecraft on twitter he would always be doing game jams and making these strange little games by himself and i and i never thought that was would even be possible and i've still never made a game just by myself just me i don't think other than for like assignments um, but never for like fun. But just the idea of making a game, even a small group, uh, blew my mind back then, and I was in like high school. And then uh, the idea of making it in a time frame that isn't six months or three months. Like the first game I ever made was a super simple, dumbed down game in Turing with with two friends, and it took us forever to do. The idea of making a game in the time frame of a game jam just seemed impossible. And even when the, I went to the first game jam that we did, I, I had no uh, illusions. I knew we were, we weren't going to finish. <laughs> and you know, by the end we, we had something and that's, that's what, that's what's so awesome about uh, game engines like unity and, and unreal is that even if you have no idea what you're doing, you can come out with something. If you have a basic knowledge, um so yeah I, just because i had faith that i knew how to google stuff that that's what brought me <laughs> gave me and just enough courage to do a game jam and just to, and the fact that i had andrew and david on my side and that was the first game jam that we, we also, did we, we also had fred on our side that game, that game jam. Fred. absolutely but fred like left part way through that's why i always forget he was there yeah he, he had a, he had work he had to go to work All right, yeah and that's that's actually another cool thing about the game jam is like you're not even really necessarily committed to it. You don't have to be if you don't need to be. So it's not like if you even if you can't commit the full weekend to it, people will drop in during the day and help out where they can. Yeah. For like um, last year's game jam, I just provided some music and that was it. That's all I had time to do. That's all I did. That's yeah. true. That's true. And I wasn't on the site either. I was just they told me the idea for their game. I made something and I sent it their way. Uh, yeah, that's right um andrew yourself um i don't remember like any distinct reason why i started or I, i'm sure i had one um i can speculate as to what my reasons probably were okay, um, sure. <laughs> i think uh so at that point we were in second year of school um we i remember hearing about it the first year we were in school but at that point i was sort of uh we didn't really have any skills really um i was very certain like you know we'd be just kind of like if I were to go, especially by myself, I would just drag another team down. Um, uh, 
and I would, you know, I would contribute this and that. Although, uh, you know, having been to five game jams, I know that's not really an excuse anymore. Um, because I mean, even if you don't know, you can just show up and just observe and learn, just try to learn something. Um, but in the second year, by that point, we had a little bit of experience with game design. I think at that point we'd done boot maybe, or at least that was, we, we were like partway through it. Yeah. Um, Anyways, so you know, I was yeah, like, you know what, I, I, I used Unity before. No, we hadn't. We hadn't used Unity, but at that Boot point, was I being had, made in uh, Unreal. Unreal three, yeah. And we wanted to try it. Unity out. That's right. I think I think that was actually might have been the reason why I was like, you know, we we have some skills now. I'm like, you know, what? we could actually try and muddle through this. So I was like, all right, we'll give it a shot. So for me personally, what I really enjoy, and the reason I got into it, and the reason I still enjoy doing it, is uh, among other reasons. Um, the, just the opportunity to learn new things um, so you get to sort of um, uh, if you if you're uh, an experienced game developer um, you get to practice what you've learned previously kind of you know flex a little bit put your skills to the test as well as pick up a few new tricks um, and I always come away from it kind of learning a couple of new things which is really cool okay I see I that's awesome I actually got three very distinct answers from all three. It's not just the repeated. So that, that was awesome. Really good. Um, we touched upon it, but like uh, Andrew, you said um, you could just drop in and, and join. Uh, and that yeah. was my next question. Um, who can participate? Can um, And and really the, the short answer is anyone. Yeah. Um, what, for So for someone who, you know, for anyone, for someone who might be somewhat interested in it, w- would you have... Uh, would you have any advice for them? This goes for all three. Would, would you have any advice for them or, or, or something um, to keep in mind when going in or, I don't know, anything that you have experienced as newer newcomers um, in the first year yeah. or so? So I, I have uh, not so much advice, but I have encouragement. Um, again, this is, my, this is my fifth game jam, but it was really cool p- seeing people there that were just at their first game jam that were just picking things up um on the fly and it sort of reminded me of you know when we started um but the, the really cool thing is that everyone there had their first game jam everyone there had their had their first um experience that you know with, met with varying levels of success mostly failure um but you know some success but uh, my encouragement is just come out learn something create something cool even if you just con- contribute a little bit it's very satisfying and the people there are very understanding um and very very supportive um, so even if even if you're not satisfied with what you did, you'll get a lot of people um, telling you what they did like about it. You know, some of the things giving you uh, uh, constructive criticism, uh, and it's it was really cool. Um, and it was interesting to to sort of be on the uh, to be able to be on the giving end of that this year, as opposed to the receiving end in previous like in, like we were in the first couple of years. Um, so yeah, uh, people are cool, uh, and you don't have to worry about people putting you down or um, or looking down on what you did. Um, and you know, don't feel self-conscious because again, a lot of people there are experienced game developers, uh, uh, ourselves included now, I guess. Uh, and so you're going to see some stuff there that's really, really interesting and really neat and really cool. And you're like, oh, I can never get there. Um, and you can if you, you know, put the work in. And I mean, it's like anything, right? Anything you want to learn, you got to put the work in. Uh, and it's game jam is just a really safe place to do it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what I'd say is. Get some sleep, <laughs> Andrew. Nine. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's like, various schools of thought on that. Anyways, my this is my school of thought. Um, <laughs> get some sleep. Uh, it's. I mean, I'm not saying like. Here's the thing. I, I think that probably, like, you don't have to get a lot of sleep. <laughs> like, if you can, you know. You don't have to get a lot of sleep is all I'm saying, but even a little bit of sleep can uh, just because here's the thing. What what me and Andrew learned uh, very specifically in our first game jam is that is the arc of productivity is how well you do things, the more tired you get. And it goes like this, right? You start off first day and everything's great. You're working on stuff. Um and then when does it when does it get bad i'd say that <laughs> it gets bad maybe like 38 hours in 
Yeah, I mean, like, because you can, <laughs> you know, if you're, if you're, you know, normal and healthy and whatever, like, you could probably manage just, you know, to be like, you know, for a little while, you're fine. But then it, you get this point where you're like, you're like, oh, I hey. need to, I need to, hey, Tyson, uh, where you get this point where <clears throat> you need to, you're like, oh, I'm so tired that even though I want to stay up and work, you're just not getting any anything done. Yeah. You're, you're just kind of like looking at your code or your art or your whatever, and you're just like. <laughs> eh, so eh. I guess, uh, I guess the equivalent of that is when you're studying for exams and you're so tired that you've reread the same page five times and not retained it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, okay. Uh, the reason David's got, David's kind of targeting me with this is because I, I tend to I tend not to sleep uh, during game jams. And you, which, there's which I which I, would, which I would point out which I would point out is the reason why a lot of our games have come close to being oh, finished. Oh, hundred percent true. hundred percent true. Andrew <laughs> is Andrew is a, a code wizard. I, I stay awake so that I stay awake so that others may sleep. It's true. Um, it's true. But 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 um, yeah. So we I mean I have a few stories on this. So our my very our very first game jam. Um, I got uh, literally zero sleep the entire weekend. Um, so we got there, you know, Friday, starts Friday 5 p.m. And I don't think I caught a wink of sleep until maybe five or six, maybe five or six o'clock on um, the Sunday. So that was a solid like 52, 51, 52 hours, something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, David can attest to this. So we, um, by the end of it, I was so out of it that like I was just sort of losing my train of consciousness um, sporadically throughout like the last few hours. Um, and it, it got to the point where like after Game Jam finished, I was so ready to drop that like I didn't even stick around to try out I, the games. I I was just gone. Yes, I would like to tell this from so my sad. perspective. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. So so we're so so like there's like just. M very little time until 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 like the game jam ends and it's time to present our games right so andrew's sitting there i will never forget what andrew looked like <laughs> he was just staring at the computer screen bloodshot eyes just, <laughs> just absolute focus just single-minded just getting that like those last finishing touches to try to make the game run or whatever was going on yeah. And then it's like, they're like, okay, stop working. You know, everyone starts you know, building. Sitting there. And I look around. Andrew is just gone. Yeah. <laughs> He's I gone. Um, actually, that brings me to another. So in future game jams, I got varying levels of sleep, usually like one or two hours, which is a world of a difference for sure. Um, this last one, I got a full six hours the first night, uh, which uh, I think was nice. Um He's and not even I, sure. And then <laughs> I, I, and, no, it was impossible. It, it, it was nice because we we got done and I got sleep, which is um, which I think shows that we're growing. Um, but I have a few I have a few other things to add to uh, to the sleep thing. First of all, if you do want to stay up, um, avoid your instincts of like loading up on caffeine and sugar because that just has diminishing returns and will eventually cause you to crash one way or the other. I found that it was actually a lot easier to stay up if I avoided sugar and just kind of, you know, drank lots of water and ate decent meals um, without loading up on junk. Um, I think we were pretty good on that this year. Yeah. yeah, too yeah. Many sandwiches. If, you, if you look at any other year's um, snacks that anyone brought and then this year's, there's a lot more fruit and crackers and like actual food <laughs> yeah. than just a pile of garbage, edible garbage. Anyways, so, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I it's, think it's, the gummies are still a, a valuable asset. Oh, for sure. It, it, yeah. it's, it's, nice, it's, it's nice in moderation, but you really can't go overboard if you really want to stay up. I mean, ultimately, it comes down to the individual. Some people are able to stay up more than others. Um, and yeah, I have another thing to add to that, but I'll let uh, other people chime in before I go, before I go back to it. Um, as far as other advice... Um... Okay. Um, <laughs> so Tyson, Tyson. Well, I had uh, a bunch of stuff I was going to say, but it's 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 flown out of my okay, mind. Okay, it, it'll come back. Um, so Tyson, you've you've joined us, um, and uh, this year you just did actually last week you just did your first game jam. 
My um, very first. I popped the cherry. So yeah. we've been we've been talking about you know past game jams and how we've been experienced and whatnot. But you as your first game jam, I have uh, two questions. One, uh, why did why did you decide to take part in this year? And um, what uh, now that you've experienced this game jam? It's, it will be going back to the same question that Andrew and David and Michael were just answering is what would you, what kind of advice or, or what would you tell someone who is interested in participating in their first one? What would you tell them? Um, so why did you start and what, what kind of advice or what experience would you lay upon them? All right. Uh, so the reason I started, um, well, I guess I can really contribute that to you guys because uh, I going into uh, IMD, I didn't really have a big, I mean, I like playing games, but I never really, um, I never developed them, right? I did mostly software programming, but not game design. So that wasn't really something that ever, um, that ever piqued my interest early on. Uh, but joining you guys in the company and watching you guys develop blobs and how you go through it, uh, you know, it kind of woke me, woke a, woke a demon inside me. Uh, I, got woke. I got woke. Uh, so when Global Game Jam came around this year, I decided, you know what, why not? I'll sign up. I'll uh... <laughs> initially the plan for this year was that I would be on a team with Andrew because <laughs> I have a I have a you know a, a decent enough understanding of programming. So that that definitely gave me a leg up when I was going in. Was I already understood programming languages and stuff? So uh, I didn't really have to look up a whole lot on how that worked. It was more learning how how Unity works. Uh, so it was like, oh, cool! I get to work with Andrew, the the sky pirate god of programming. Uh, and then the unthinkable happened, and we got split up. Yeah. Well, we we originally basically had an idea because there was too many of us to fit on one team this year, so we decided to split the teams. But um, going into it, we decided we had like a, a set split, like we we divided people up evenly. But then on the day of, when we started coming up with our idea. We just we figured out that like the idea that we kind of came up with not everyone wanted to do and it wasn't an even split between the two teams that we made so we had, the teams ended up getting shuffled around so luckily uh, a friend of ours uh jason who developed a game called spectrum break uh he joined our team and taught me the ways of the jedi uh in unity programming i learned a whole heck of a lot over the weekend and it got me it got me really excited and really into uh into game programming so i'm coming at it with a with a new perspective and uh you know, I mean, I'm I'm hooked now. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yes. One of us. One of us. One of us. Um, we got it, it him, is boys. It is it is important to note, though, and I think don't think something we we brought up was, um, especially since Tyson went into it. Tyson went into it as a coder, um, and, but just so people know, it's not. You don't have to have any programming experience to go in. in oh fact, yeah, a lot for of people, sure. In fact, a lot of you know, half of a game is. Um, is is the the visuals and stuff the art um and that you know and even if you can't do like you know 3d art or something like that even just doing concepts um and you know there's um menu menus to be done so those need buttons and yes they and do icons and, and like yeah. you know 2d art so there's there's a whole ton of um uh even music you know michael does the music for most of our games that's the thing there's so much um basically any creative talent can help yeah. contribute to a game uh, and so Tyson and I and uh, David, to some extent, go into it as coders often, but uh, that's definitely not the only way to approach it. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and, and we and we need we need people that don't do coding because otherwise our games are ugly. <laughs> Fair enough. I, yeah. I went into the programming side mostly because uh, my drawing abilities are lesser than a freshly born child. So. <laughs> Okay. Tyson, I beg of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you you've seen me play Drawful, guys. Like you know, you know how it be. It I really think you, I think like you're that. dramatically <laughs> overestimating I mean, how good children are at drawing. Tyson, we've all seen everyone play Drawful, and you you know, across the board, it's not great. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, remind me, what was the second question? As, was as advice? Like, now, yeah, advice. Or advice. what would you tell someone who who came up to you and said, Tyson, I'm interested in joining Game Jam or doing Game Jam. What would you tell uh, First piece of advice, watch the documentary I just made. <laughs> <laughs> that gives you a pretty good idea of, uh, of how the whole weekend kind of kind of progresses, and it gives you a good perspective of um, a, a large variety of people who participate. That was another one of the factors that got me to join, was creating that documentary. It was like, look at how much fun these people are having. I should have fun too. <laughs> <laughs> so 
uh, that's my first piece of advice and also like subtle, you know, please watch my stuff. Uh, where can people see that? <laughs> on YouTube, Sky Pirate's uh, YouTube channel. That's where it's I'm up. I'm sure, we'll, I'm sure we'll have a link to it. Somewhere. <laughs> Click the link somewhere. Um, the other piece of advice I would say is, uh, I mean, do what I did and just, uh, just jump in with both feet. Because uh, there's no there's no expectations of it really. You go in, you you learn stuff, you make something. If you're if you're lucky, you make a game that works. Um, but it, it's more it's more about the journey than the final product, <laughs> uh, in my opinion. You know, I I don't think I've had as much fun in a 48 hour span as I had during Game Jam, and that was just because well, for one, I had a good team to work with, and hey. for another, it hey. was. Uh, I, I'm I'm not ashamed to admit that I learned more in that 48 hours than I did in years of school. Oh, absolutely. So, oh man, I can attest to that. Like, I was working with you. It was free. I, I was I was on Tyson's <laughs> team, and like from from him showing up on Friday evening, and we started working. Him like not knowing anything about coding in in Unity until like Sunday morning when I'm like, Tyson, can you help me with this? And he was just. He was a wizard. He knew exactly what he's looking for, exactly all well, the code. To, I mean, okay. <laughs> Let's maybe, not go that far. Maybe not exactly, but like, I mean, from from Friday Surprising. night to when you started to Sunday afternoon when you were finishing up, it was astounding how much you'd learned yeah. in two days. Yeah, we, we swear Unity's not paying us, but Unity, if you're listening to this and you want to pay us, we wouldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. We'll take, uh, we'll take any sponsorship we can get. <laughs> Uh, Matt, do you mind if I ask a we, question? We, we accept oh, go the for coin. It. Yeah. I wanted to ask, uh, this is what I was thinking about when we were coming up with ideas, is when you're coming up with a game jam idea, how much should you target your design towards the audience of people who are going to be playing it at the end of the day, or should you just try to make something that's fun? Like, How much do you, do you guys try to target your ideas, or are you just go and make whatever is interesting to you? Well, I mean, I think I think you know from just our this game jam past that like we don't necessarily uh, target uh, the people who are playing it. Um, to some extent, you do kind of have to, um, not specifically the the people of the demographic, but just bearing in mind that people are probably only going to sit down and play it for a few minutes. Um, so you kind of have to get an idea across mm-hmm. quickly. So you know you don't expect them to play like a half hour narrative game. Um, so to that extent, yes, you kind of do have to target. But other than that, like the game we made this past year was very uh, experimental, I suppose. A lot of people lean towards, in, in my experience, a lot of people lean towards more like uh, multiplayer. In some cases, arcadey, like like you know one or you know one mechanic and just kind of very fast paced and just kind of very fun um, and high energy. Um, whereas this year we tried something a little bit different. We tried something a little more a little more artsy, a little more experiential. Um, which I, I'm, I'm glad with what we turned up with, and it was interesting. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think it was um, I. I was talking to someone just today uh, uh, about it, and they were like, "Yeah, we, we played it, but like I didn't really get it." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, it it, it makes sense because unless we were there to sort of explain it and kind of give it a little bit of context, like I can completely understand that it wasn't you know, uh, wasn't super uh, uh, interesting." But um, yeah, so that's that's my answer to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that. I mean, I I don't think that I think that Game Jam because it's such a you know who cares kind of atmosphere. I think that you sh- you don't need to worry too much about tailoring the game towards what you think people will like. Mm-hmm. Though one thing, like Andrew said, this is you know people are only going to be they're not going to have a lot of time to play your game, uh, so you do want to keep that in mind and make it so that like you know a play session of this game is not going to be too long so that's that's the that is the kind of consideration i would say that you should be doing because you know that's just polite our game kind of like i would say like maybe straddled the edge of yeah. being reasonable because it's like if you're if you're gonna you have five minutes to, to beat our game which is like if you kind of wander around for five minutes, that's it. But like you could complete it sooner. But like, but that's still a, a decent chunk of time in the like. I think it's like two hours. Yeah, game, or so the that game, people the game plan have, goes from three to five, where people have to try out people's games, which is really, mm-hmm. in the grand scheme of things, not that much time. Um, 
so that's definitely what I I would say. But as far as goofy, weird ideas, I think that most of the time, because to make a fun game, quote unquote fun, you know, you need more time to think about stuff and refine stuff. And Game Jam, unless you're really lucky or plan it out, just you just happen to plan it out real well. Game Jam is not the kind of place where you're going to have that time. So I'd say focus on trying to come up with some kind of mechanic. But it's just focus and just try to you come up with the idea and you make it. Because what is going to happen is you're going to make a game. And even if you get it working, you're like, wait a minute, this game actually like isn't kind of fun. It's just sort of kind of weird. And, oh, I'm just sort of clicking on things and stuff's ha- like. Yeah. You know, I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to add to that real quick. Um, okay. The thing is, you, one thing to keep in mind is, um, and the reason it's easy, you don't really have to cater to people all that much is because people are very open minded when playing the games. And they know that you made it in forty eight hours, and they know that it's not, um, you know, not not kind of up to what it would be normally. Hmm. Um, and so yeah, like people, and and again, it's in context of you. You're there to explain it to them, right? So you don't necessarily have to get it all the way. And people usually get the idea of what you're trying to get across. Well, yeah, that's that's well, that's what I was getting to, that it doesn't matter if it ends up like that. That's pretty much an inevitability. So that yeah. if that's going to happen anyway, it's just, you know, go go nuts. Yeah. Um, on our on our side, at least for for my team, um, which was comprised of uh, Jason, who's not here, um, Tyson and Michael, um, we focused really right at the beginning. We knew we wanted to make a fast-paced, silly, fun game. We didn't know what it was exactly, but we just knew it had to be a fun, quick, like one mechanic, maybe two, super fast, and it had to be fun. We knew that. Um, so I would say not tailor to people um, in terms of like doing research for, for you know your target audience and stuff, because obviously you don't have time. But I think you should focus not uh, not on specific types of people or specific ages, but maybe more the type of game that you know some people will like. So um, for what you, uh, David and Andrew, your game, um, you guys was a lot more, a lot slower, a lot more relaxed sort of game. So a lot of people will like that sort of more meditative, uh, exploratory game. But whereas we focused more on the fast-paced let's go gung-ho sort of game. So maybe that would attract more uh, those sorts of players. So I don't think we focused on a specific target audience of like how old are they or their gender or whatever, but we focused on the type of play of, uh, of gameplay people f- enjoy. So maybe when you're doing game jam, you focus on the type of uh, play style, not on the type of people. We also just kind of want to try different things, right? Like, we'd done games like that before, so we kind of want to try something new. Yeah, it was... uh, Yeah, the... I mean, it all begins with, with, the, with the theme, right? Yeah, yeah that's true. actually, yeah, that's something we didn't really talk about was the theme. I think Tyson was going to... I can I can talk about the theme for a bit. Uh, so, for any of you who didn't participate in a game jam or knew what the theme was, the theme this year was, what does home mean to you? So... Real quick, Tyson, what is what what is the theme? What is what is that? Oh, right, of course. So uh, every year for Game Jam, they announce a, they announce a specific theme that your game should revolve around somehow. Uh, last year the theme was Astro or not Astro Snot. That was the game. <laughs> last year the theme was Transmission. Yes. And you guys made the game Astro Snot, where you're a bunch of astronauts on a space station, and, and there's, there's a disease, sickness. There's disease transmission. Yeah. Yes. You see how we went uh, back to the theme. This year the theme was what does home mean to you which is when you first think about it a, a really difficult theme to still, try to I make still, a game out i of. still think it's a really difficult theme to make a game out it's of. a difficult theme but <laughs> I, never, I never really came around on that one there's, there's actually something really crucial to i think pretty much any creative endeavor as far as where you're starting and it doesn't the, the this is it it doesn't matter too much where an idea starts right like the theme is just the starting point you say yeah, exactly it's it's just something to get the conversation started and it's not yeah. something especially for game jam it's because it's such a who cares kind of place it's not like they're like hey you didn't adhere to the theme enough <laughs> um, You're so, so it's it's literally just there to help you 
come up with something to to make it basically make it so that you don't to, you can just shed whatever maybe like pre idea you had you might have had or just like come in start fresh saying what does home mean to you and then you i mean i also agree that it's it's not a very on first it's like not a very versatile one first thought it's not a very versatile not a very inspiring necessarily theme but it it's a theme and i yeah. think that uh something you know interesting things came out of it mm -hmm. Oh, most definitely. I mean, we we I mean, bounced yeah. around a few yeah. ideas in our group, and uh, I think my, one of my one of my favorite things that we came up with was twisting the theme to the home is mean to you. Oh yes, I, I did like that. Uh, I love I, I love that. I'm kind of sad we didn't do something along those lines. Oh man, we jumped I mean, all just because I love that. Just because I love the name. Yeah. The the really cool thing for uh, one of the cool one of the oh my goodness one of the coolest things for me. Uh, when I was walking around and looking at all the games that were shown off is just how many different ways you can interpret that one sentence. Like yeah. you guys made a really cool, you know, uh, meditative kind of game where you, you went around and you tried to collect, you know, the things that you need for your home. We actually uh, took the theme very literally. We, we actually, we, I took the theme a lot. We took the theme a lot more literally than I expected we were going to. Yeah. We, we, we kind of, we, we, di we diverged a lot and then we kind of came back to it eventually. Mm-hmm. We we came up with a completely different <laughs> idea where he plays a bunch of homeless people throwing pigeons at each other in in shopping carts in shopping carts because walking cycles are hard. <laughs> because, oh, why not? Yeah, um, I, there I, was, you can try a thing in my sky higher. <laughs> there was uh, there was a, a sort of I don't know like a tower defense kind of game, not really, where it was like two people like protecting their planets with the garbage and shooting missiles at each other. Mm -hmm. I love that game. Uh, that was there really was one snazzy. There was one um, I didn't I didn't get the chance to play it, but it had something to do with sushi. Oh, that or, one was yeah. good. It was. Yeah, uh, like, was one. Called, I might have missed that one. No, no, it was like a like the dim sum one, where basically the idea yeah, is it. that you're playing different people at a table, and there's like, you know, uh, there's different yeah, ingredients. There's, there's no, no, there's not food items that you need to get. Like I'm, different kinds of dumplings and stuff like that. I'm, real, I'm realizing now that I, com I completely missed that game because I have no recollection of that. And one. basically, the idea is that you got to quickly. You can either speed up the spinning of the table or you can grab with your chopsticks and you want to grab certain kinds of uh dumplings and stuff like that uh but what happens is that everyone just keeps pressing the spin button and the table just spins out of control and all the stuff flies away and it's, <laughs> it's the only way to win is not to play it was so basically it was people People can be real jerks to each other in that game. But well, see that was that was an important mechanic and that's what made it so great. Mm -hmm. Is that once you reach, once you had collected everything you needed to collect, or once, sorry, not 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 once you collected, but what, once there was nothing uh, on the table that was in your list of things to connect, your only goal was then to just spin it as fast as possible as me and mess everyone else up. Yeah, it was it was very which simple, was really clever, game, but it was very good. It was it, it seemed very um, very polished, and the UI yeah. was very nice. The gameplay was very nice, and I believe it was runner up. At the gamers' choice, it year? was it was yeah. third. It was third. I think, yeah, I think it, was, it, was it was their first, first game jam. Too, ex, wasn't extreme, it? extreme real space was second. So. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, they were they were top three, so they did a good job. And yeah, I think it might have been their first jam. I think at least right first or second. Mm -hmm. so if we had used bumpers instead of triggers for our game, we might have pushed <laughs> them out of there. But that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Oh well, it works. It's fine. Live you can it, throw pigeons all you want. Yeah. Um. Okay, so uh, personally, on for all of you guys, uh, what would you say was your favorite? I guess uh, Tyson, this is a very obvious answer for you, but for everyone else, what was your favorite game jam game that you've ever made? <laughs> so take take a second to think about that, Tyson. What's your answer? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, can it uh, does it have to be a game jam game that we've made, or can it be an idea that we had? During uh, the game jam, I guess for your case, we'll go with idea since they're uh, <laughs> the other I guys mean, think the, about the, your favorite game you've made. The the throwing pigeon idea was really funny. I I think I'm the one that came up with that. You came up with the pigeons, or Michael came up with the pigeons. No, I think I think, I think, I, think I think I came up with homing pigeons. Yeah, uh, because and then we kind of because, because we riffed off of what is homing to you, and I I brought up homing missiles. Yeah, and then I went and then I went back to homing, pigeons. and then I went to homing pigeons, and then you guys kind of stuck with the pigeons for your game. Yeah. Um. But there was one idea that we had where um, uh, it was basically uh, you're like trying to you're like angry at your neighbor. 
you have a really sucky neighbor and you're trying to like push them out of your neighborhood and uh i mean i just i just really enjoyed that idea because i've i've uh i have had crappy neighbors in the past and uh you know sweet sweet redemption i thought that line had a lot of potential to it and i think if i had if we had if i hadn't gone with the idea we did that that's that was the run up for me for sure Hmm. um all right so so the other three uh idea of your favorite game uh i think that uh i think that uh that home was my favorite (laughs) Um, <laughs> it, there, it, there is a question mark in the name, so that is the there is a the question mark in the name. The proper name is the picture of a house. Yeah, and it's true. Question mark. Um, but yeah, I think it was my favorite because it. Looking back, so there was Side Clash, which was a a, a beautiful mess. Uh, <laughs> um, there was uh, then there was um, was it Imagination the next year? Uh. Y- Yes. That was 2016. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was uh, Tim Imagination was the second game. Yeah, and Tim Imagination, like I think the the charming parts of it, like it had it had some charming art. Um, and but the actual like mechanical aspect of it was a part that didn't really work in the end. Yeah, that was um, like overscoped by far. That one, that one kind of that game kind of sprung out of the art, honestly. Yeah. Um, so the, it was almost the main focus to some degree. But um, also, we were still inexperienced at that point. Yes, true. true. And then, then there was, uh, then I wasn't really, then there was, uh, uh, but, uh, but of course there was, uh, Astro's Knot, which had a lot of, a lot of style to it. But I think that as a game, see, that's what I'm talking about when I say that, like we had, you had the ideas for Astro's Knot as mechanics and you say, okay, we'll, we'll make those mechanics. And then it's like, does it turn into a game? That's really like a game that you can like, it's like fun. And I would say that Astronaut Astronaut had a lot of stuff going for it, but being like a fun, understandable, winnable game with mechanics that were like good was maybe not one of them. Okay. Um. So, but I think that I think that Home was actually like a game that could be played and won and it was like an understandable system and it i like that it was like a systematic game like it was legitimately a systematic game where like there's all this different systems in this world and you're trying to use them and mm-hmm. stuff like that um and also it michael's music i think i mean it always adds a lot but especially for adds. for home it really <laughs> gave gave it this this like nice calming like explorative meditative feel that was really like worked hmm. um, so, yeah. and none of us were even high imagine what that would have been like <laughs> <laughs> i mean after after a few days of uh not getting a lot of sleep you know i guess that kind of counts <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, uh, all right that's me michael and andrew I'm, I'm gonna let's see so i mean probably summarize what the games were so we had our, our very first game was um Cy- 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 Clash. Cy- which was uh, meant to be this really weird, zany um, game. It's rhythm sort of like... exploration. <laughs> A rhythm uh, exploration co- game. Co- com- competitive rhythm exploration. Competitive rhythm exploration game with um, like a Mayan ancient temple ex- it, like thing. It, it, would, it would take a little while to explain the whole thing, but that, that gives you the gist <laughs> of how interesting that was. Oh my um, goodness. That, that one was kind of like 2D sprites in a 3D environment, which was interesting. Um, yeah, it had, next, a, it had next... a neat look. Next was to Imagination, which was uh, was done more like a 2D cartoon art. So it was all two, again, it was 2D sprites, but it was uh, it wasn't pixel art. It was like um, you know art. just car, car, cartoony. Um, and also, but in a 3D space. Yeah, again in a 3D space. Yes. Um, and then this one was basically your idea. I think the theme of that year was like routine or something like that. Um, and yeah, so yeah. Or, what we ended up doing was was ritual. Uh, teaming. Ritual. Ritual, ritual, ritual. That's what it was. Um, so it was kind of his his morning routine: getting up in the morning, brushing his teeth, eating breakfast, you know, getting ready for school and catching the bus. So we, we had basically the same gameplay loop like three or four times, but you had like different outfits that you had got into in the morning. And it was very differently themed. There was little different things you had to do. And it was yeah, it was meant um, that there were going to be different little challenges. Yeah, it never really came together, but the idea was was cute and it was fun. Um, the year after that was the year that uh, was senior project year. So that was one I was most involved in that with a couple other uh, my classmates. Uh, Michael involved himself a little bit with music and uh, some sprites, um, I think. Um, which was uh, that one was um, uh, the Crush, Crush Boogie. Boogie. Uh, 
um, which was a uh, uh, a wave-based um, defense game, I guess. Um, that was actually, uh, we sort of worked rhythm into it, not as a mechanic, but just as a, a stylistic thing, which was really cool. Uh, and then after that was Astrosnauts, which uh, Tyson explained was uh, you know a bunch of astronauts on a station, uh, and they're a couple of them are start out, start out as diseased, and you're basically your job is to try to isolate, like, try to find the diseased ones, isolate them before they could spread the disease too much, um, you know, kill them if you had to, uh, eject them into space, and then evacuate healthy uh, astronauts. Mm-hmm. Um, that was done with uh, voxel, 3D voxels. And then we had Hulk, which um, we've kind of already gone over a little bit. I so mean, oh, that between... one was also Voxels, I guess. It's... That was also Voxels, yes. Um, so between those five, I want to say that um, Big Crush Boogie was my favorite. Hmm. Um, honestly, refined, I, th- I think. just it's mechanically the most refined game that we've made. Um, it felt like I, I played it again a couple days ago, just sort of going over our old games. I played it, and honestly, it holds up. It, like I played it, I had fun playing it. Like it's 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 challenging. Um, it's it's fun it, and it, it works well in the in the context of a game jam because it was it, you know it takes you about I mean you could technically go for as long as you as long as you can survive but um, a reasonable score is like uh, roughly five minutes I'd say maybe a bit less um, uh, and yeah so it just mechanically just feels really good it felt balanced felt um, felt challenging uh, visually it wasn't that polished that one we actually went for like a full 3D thing but it wasn't that complex um, it got the job done. Yeah, it did exactly. the 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 focus of that one was was definitely more mechanical, um, and musical, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that was definitely my favorite. Um, and again, it, I kind of uh, showing my showing my hand as a programmer, but uh, <laughs> again, just 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 purely purely for the mechanics of that game, I really really enjoyed it. It, it came together. It felt the most complete, um, and while also being fun. And uh, last one is Michael. Favorite My game. favorite final product of a game was Bit Crush Boogie. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite idea was Side Clash, and I still want to make that game someday. So I, or some Side sort Clash, of inspi- inspired by that game. Like, yeah. Side Clash was, I, I, will, I will give an honorable mention to Side Clash. It was one of our most zany ideas ever. One of the zaniest um, game ideas. One of the most out of the box ideas we've ever had. We should really write out like try to make a game design document. Just yeah. try to like we, we, hash we, that out. We toyed we we, we did were, toy we, we toyed briefly with actually making it as Skypire before we made blobs. We did. It wasn't uh, brief. Like there was a period of time when we were like, Yeah, we're gonna remake Cyclash. That's gonna be our first game as Skypire Studios. And then and then yeah. it somehow di- diluted itself into blobs. It, <laughs> no, no, it, blobs. It, it, no, it didn't dilute itself. We someone came up with a different idea and we went with that instead. Um, it never, it didn't really evolve into. It. We just had a different. But the idea. only real connective thing was that it was a multiplayer game. Yeah, we we kept yeah. that. We kept the the, we, local, we yeah, were, the same screen, local multiplayer. Well, that, that's I think what, I was worried that Psy Clash was too big of scope, <laughs> and I wanted to go smaller scope, and that's what where Blobs came from. I, honestly, I, I think the scope of Psy Clash might even be smaller, or at least it could have been around the same. It um, is now that we see I, what Blobs became, I, but I just, I just, I just don't think the world was ready for Psy Clash. Yeah. <laughs> if, um, the I'm world still wasn't game. ready. We and can, then my we favorite. Can a, we can do a game jam at at uh, at Dunkel Base. We can. And you can actually sleep on the premises. Oh yeah. <laughs> Big <laughs> That's bonus. True. That's true. You uh, you say that, David and Jasmine literally just brought that up in chat. She was like, "You guys could just do your own game jam," and we've yeah. discussed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Before is we have, our we've own discussed game it, jam. but not seriously. I think that it's I think that it's a it's a good idea. Like because like you said, like we said, this you learn a lot at game jams. Yeah, and... I was I was talking to I was actually talking to Fred about that just uh, before we started this um, like an hour ago. And uh, uh, the reason I think we don't do it is because uh, we already have so much work to do on other games that we're releasing and stuff that it's it's hard to justify taking the time away to do something unrelated. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm the only one with a lot of free time. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing. Like, it is, it is a commitment. It is like a full weekend. At least, like the global game jam is. Uh, mm-hmm. So that is something you can't really just kind of do every day, every week. It might be worth attempting to game jam like a prototype for for a future oh, game. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I, one of the things I I think would be cool to do is like um, game jam an existing game that we're already doing and just kind of get like a forty eight hour chunk of work done on it. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Another we're another thing. Together. Another. I think the most valuable it would be is if we were between projects with nothing in the works or nothing, nothing that we're thinking of. We're like we're we're you know we're uninspired. Let's try to just kind of like create something really quick, see if we like it, and if we if not, you know, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And the last thing I was going to say is my my favorite work that I've done. Uh, I usually do music and audio, and then my favorite work that I did was on Imagination. I still. I'm really impressed that I was able to pump out that much music. Oh, oh yeah, there was quite a span of time that, that I did. There was like six we had, we, tracks. There was like five or six levels, and each one had a different theme. And I basically took the same musical uh, motif do, 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 and, do, 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 uh, and, uh, and and basically honestly, convert it converted it into six different styles, and that, that was really fun. Your work on Imagination is some of my favorite work. It was. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, all you of your work is some of my really favorite good, work, but you always make really good music for all the game jam yeah. games. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, on that note, uh, I'd say that was a very good discussion on game jams and global game jam more specifically. Um, so I guess the, the one thing that, that people who are interested in going into game jam could come away from this is it's a lot of fun. You learn a lot. You get to make some crazy stuff. And, and don't be too afraid. Uh, and, and if you go to game jam and you're in Ottawa and you go to the Carlton site, you might meet us. And there so. we go. Or uh, join our team. Do it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I guess one one other thing to mention is that there's more than just global game jam, and also like like there's game jams happening all the time, and and other there's like hackathons which are more kind of wide open as far as what you're making. Not yeah, they're not, not specifically games. Yeah, but there's all kinds of things like this out there. There's just like mm -hmm. art jam or graphic design jam. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to try. Uh, I'd like to try doing Ludum Dare sometime. Yes, that'd be good. Um, it's a game jam. So for anyone who's yeah. interested in that kind of stuff, just look it up. You can just participate. The community is super open, super willing to, to teach newcomers. Um, veteran, you could you could be working with with veterans who have been in the industry for twenty years. It, so you get to learn a lot. You get to meet a lot of cool people. So it's highly recommended. Yeah. Um, so. And as a last point, as Tyson mentioned earlier, go check out our first documentary from the about Global Game Jam that we did last year. It's called Peanut Butter and Game Jam. That's on our web on our actually it's on our website. It's also on our YouTube channel. Um, there will also be a link in the description. So check that out. On that All note, right. uh, Andrew? so we so this once again this has been uh, Skypire in no particular order. Uh, Michael, <laughs> David, Tyson, Matt, and Andrew. <laughs> I want to be first. <laughs> I want, I want, it's I want in no particular I, order, I, damn it. I, <laughs> Sorry, Andrew, who who was it with again? It was with Tyson, Michael, Matt, David, and Andrew. <laughs> All me, right. Me and my speaking of funny names, me and my uh, me and my friend John, we were we were doing like a fake uh, cooking show yesterday while we were making guacamole for the Super Bowl, <laughs> and uh, we were like, we, we we came up with the name for it. It was called "We Might Need a Knife for This." <laughs> That's the name of the show. Excellent. All right. Well, All thank right. you very much for joining us. Oh my God! And see you next month. Bye bye. 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 bye.